How's it going everybody, Ben from Budget Pokemon here, and welcome back to another Pokemon news video. I'm afraid it's not all good news, so let's jump straight into it. So let's start it off with this Reddit post right here. So allegedly a printing company worker stole hits off the line and tried to offload them to a local game store. And this is for Fusion Strike. And just judging by the amount of cards, this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I don't know just how much the Pokemon company prints. I don't know if this was like from from one print run or if this was, you know, stolen over a period of time. But there are certain implications here, which I'm going to get into a bit later. But just look at these stacks and stacks of cards, stacks of alternate arts, literal stacks. I mean, we have the ESP on VMAX, which is around, I think, 170 or 160 euros. The Intellion VMAX is, I think, around 30. The Mew VMAX is around 100, 110, and then the Gengar is, I think, the most expensive at 170 euros. And I think someone tried to estimate just how much money there is lying on the table here, and they estimated like around $500,000. I don't know if that's right, but by the amount of cards, I don't know, might be. That does open the question though, like how long has this been going on? Because we've also had a follow-up post later on. Uh, with with like stacks, not as many as the, as this post, but stacks of Umbreon V Maxes and stacks of Rayquaza V Maxes. Now, judging by the comments, though, this was taken before Evolving Skies actually came out. So this is like an an old picture, if you will, that has now resurfaced. But as I've said, that does open up the question, though. Like, how long has this been going on? Was Fusion Strike the first, or have there been other sets that people have stolen hits from? And does that even impact the pull rates? I mean, my sample size of, of like one booster box, and I pulled Jack. I pulled nothing, but that's a that's a really small sample size. That shouldn't be taken. But still, like the amount of cards that the Pokemon Company prints, does this even impact the pull rates? Yeah, so the Pokemon Company literally printed 9 billion cards last year. So this might just be like not even 1% of of the, the alternate arts and, and rainbow rares and so on and so forth. But if I had to take a guess, I would think this might have been going on since 2020. You know, 2020 when the hype of Pokemon started, you know, everybody was at home, everybody wanted a hobby, many people got into the hobby like newly, many, many people returned, as I have, and like with the hype and all around it, I think that is where it might have started. And that's actually scary stuff. That is really scary stuff because you always have that doubt, at least I will. If I were to open a Fusion Strike booster box right now, I would always have that doubt in my mind that, oh, if I don't pull anything, this must have been one of the boxes that that were, that didn't have any pulls because they were stolen, which probably isn't even true. Maybe these pulls were just, you know, the, the, there are sheets, literal sheets, which only have alternate arts, if I remember correctly, and maybe these weren't even supposed to make it in boosters. I don't know. Nobody knows. It's all guessing here. But then we also have a statement right here from the the card store that that this guy was trying to offload them to from what i've heard though he he like mailed them in instead of actually going there in person but let's just let's just try to read the 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 statement right here so tcw was approached by an individual inquiring if we were interested in purchasing from his set tcw reviewed picks from the seller and advised they were either fake or stolen Realizing the amount of packs it would have required to obtain that quantity of hits, it seemed clear that one or the other was true. The seller explained his connection to the source and TCW immediately contacted Pokemon Corp through proper channels. The information was sent to the corporate ladder given the seriousness of the situation. A high-ranking Pokemon official contacted TCW. Pokemon Corp and TCW worked together to successfully retrieve and return the cards. Pokemon Corp acknowledged Trade Card World for their critical contribution to the recovery of these stolen items. It was the largest return of stolen property to date. Raiding Card World was asked to keep this information confidential while an active in investigation was underway. 
With respect to that request, TCW has kept this story and their important involvement out of the spotlight. And I, I want to know what will happen with these cards now. They were taken back by the Pokemon Company, which is great. You know, they're not in the hands of the of the thief anymore. And they're not making the way around, you know, flooding the market or whatever. Which in itself would be good because that would bring the price down. But then itself it is stolen product, so mm, I don't know. But this, this kind of offers the question, like, we've seen this happen with Evolving Skies. Like, what are they going to do now? Are, are Is the Pokemon Company going to reprint Fusion Strike and Evolving Skies? For the latter, I'm really hoping. I, I can't do one to open Evolving Skies at a decent price again. And are they going to, like, stack the boxes with hits as, like, an apology? No one knows. I mean, if I had to guess, they might actually reprint these sets. I mean, Evolving Skies, I'm, I'm like... 80% sure that they're going to reprint because that set is really popular all the cards are getting really expensive and if the Pokemon company just wants money that's how they make it just reprint evolving skies but yeah this is this is kind of kind of insane okay continuing on still on a little bit of a sad note but maybe there is some some light here at the end of the tunnel we have a statement from the Pokemon company Japan actually and let's just read this. Thank you for your continued patronage of products. We are currently out of stock of all Pokemon products. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience caused to customers who were unable to purchase. Giving top priority to delivering the desired products to our customers, we will continue to strengthen our production system and promote the reproduction and shipment of products in short supply. We will continue to do our best so that everyone can enjoy the Pokemon card game. Thank you for understanding. So the implications of this statement is they're ramping up production immensely in Japan now. And I think they've also gone as far as saying that they will reprint older sets that were out of print previously. Like, no, EV Heroes, for example. That would be a good set to reprint. And this is actually, this is kind of great news because it means the Pokemon Company Japan have finally acknowledged the problem that is like, you know, going on there, all the products are out of stock. You can't buy anything at MSRP if you don't win the lottery. And th this is good that they actually, actually acknowledges this. Okay, so a few more happy notes here, if you will. Um, the Yono SAR, you know, I've posted, I had, I had a community post on my channel. That card, when it was released, was up at like 298, actually me. Yeah, okay, so here's my community post. This was when the when the Yono SAR was like completely new and it was being sold for 298,000 yen, which is or which was around 2000 euros or 2265 dollars, which is absolutely insane. Um now the price has gone down. It is still it is still 170,000 yen, but that is almost half from what it usually was. Still, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on this card. It's still insane, but it kind of goes to show, like, if there was more product, this card would be even cheaper. We also have this right here. This is like a, a, a poker card chart from the same Twitter user right here, which is actually really, really helpful. It's, it not only is for, for this card, like for a lot of different cards. I might make a video on, on this specific site. It's actually really, really helpful. But as we can see here, there are um, different categories. PSA 10, of course, there is no PSA 10 yet. So we have like Scratch, which I, I would think would be like a an excellent condition or, or like Light Plate, maybe a bit better than that. And then Beauty Products would be like Mint Copies, like, you know, no flaws and so on and so forth. So the latest price was 163,000 yen. And for a Scratch, it's, it's just under 150,000. As you can see, uh, the highest price when it was, was just released was 300,000 yen, but we've already had a, a really, really good curve right here. Although I do have to admit, this is still too expensive. This might be good news, but it is still too expensive for a single card. At least that's what I think. The card itself is pretty cool, but I mean, come on. This is modern Pokemon. You're not gonna spend 1,000 euros or 1,000 dollars on a modern card from a newly released set. That is ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. 
And this is the same. There is also information right here on Mekari. The card is being sold for like 140,000 yen. So yeah, 140,000 yen, which is just below 1,000 euros, like 950 euros, something like that. It's still kind of insane. I I wish I had I had better news, but this is what it is. Well, well, anyways, I guess that does it for for this Pokemon news video. I'm thinking about doing these whenever I I have some interesting news. Maybe not like a regular thing, but definitely when whenever there's something interesting going on in the Pokemon TCG world, I I'll try to make one of these videos. Let me know what you think. And other than that, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated. Um, consider subscribing for more awesome content in the future. And thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace.